Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for taking the time to join us for our ninth webinar in the sealed series, Keep Calm and Get Digital. My name is Lisa, and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. We are on the second day of Alert Level 3. It's crazy the amount of traffic jams that were caused yesterday from people wanting McDonald's. However, it was a nice reminder that people are still wanting to purchase in times like these. For some businesses though, the move to level three, three has meant they are still unable to trade or work. And with the unknown ahead, there is still time right now to be taking action on what's next for my business. Today's topic, how to get a service business online through productization has been picked to assist with those businesses that are still waiting. However, I'm sure there's some helpful tips for all of us in there. We have a familiar face today for the webinar and an excellent speaker. Tar Tauranga Agency Manager and Senior Digi Digital Business Strategist, Jarrah Borman. Jarrah has been hands-on with a number of businesses over the lockdown period and assisting them with brainstorming on how they can change their business during lockdown and post COVID-19. And I'm sure he will have some great tips for us today. On our discussion panel today, we have Rhonda Amende, Zeal's Auckland Agency Manager and Relationship Manager. She has been working with Zeal's internal teams and researching ways we can help businesses right now, in particular with productization. If you haven't joined us before, I'm quickly running over the housekeeping rules. At any point, feel free to post questions. We will save most of them for the end, but you can do that by using the Q&A button down the bottom here. So right now, I will hand it over across to Jarrah to take us through his presentation. Cool, uh, thanks very much, Lisa. Um, so today we're gonna to be talking about how to get a service business online through productization. And so this is, a, as, as Lisa really pointed out, this is a critical process that a lot of businesses are having to go through who can't operate effectively, uh, especially during alert levels three and four, and uh, contains a few practical tips on how you might be able to actually start generating some revenue through these, these tricky times as well. So what do we mean by productization? It's a big fancy word. What does it actually mean? And, and what are we re how, how are we referring to it? So it's the act of modifying something so that it's suitable as a commercial product. In this context, it's how do we take a service that's delivered uh, normally through um, any other mean and turn it means and turn it into a uh, digital product that can be purchased online. All right, that's what we're talking about here. And so productization is incredibly important uh, for service businesses that are looking to operate their business uh, in a business environment that requires this contact-free commerce uh, that we that we that we're being talked about so much at the moment. So there are a number of specific initiatives that you can look to put in place that will help you with this. And I'm gonna go through some of the most common ones. And, and for most businesses, it may actually be a combination of these different tactics that work well for them. So let's start, let's start. The first thing and the most obvious thing uh, is vouchers. If you haven't thought about this, this is actually the quickest thing that you can possibly do to get online. And I know a lot of cafes that were, were offering vouchers for sale uh, through periods where they weren't able to operate at all. And it's a great way to kind of um, bring forward some revenue and, and get some cash flow going maybe to help with some of the costs that you've got uh, when there's no other way to get revenue in. So you can sell vouchers that can be redeemed for your service. It's pretty straightforward. I think we're all pretty familiar with vouchers, but it's really good to know that this is something that you could you could look to, to deploy quite quickly. Vouchers can be can be obviously sold online quickly and very easily, but um, they can be the most important thing here is they can be sold even if you're not actually operating at this point in time. And for me, that's probably one of the why, why I started with this point because it's absolutely critical for those businesses that don't have cash flow right now it's a way to start getting some revenue in and also start helping you with forward bookings and things like that. It will allow you to get loyal customers to support you through this process. And we've seen a real rise in this over the last four weeks. I know myself, I've bought vouchers for different cafes that I, that I, that I frequent just to try and help them through this period. Um, and, and, you know, that's just a, a practical example of how you can get something like this set up and online um, and, and operating and, and getting some revenue in. Uh, as I said, vouchers, sales can actually help you forecast and schedule what work you might have coming up uh, in advance. Let me give you some examples. Um, so 
that can, uh, customers that can deploy vouchers that you wouldn't normally expect to see vouchers for. So maybe it could be a mechanic who's looking to sell prepaid service vouchers or Warner Fitness vouchers. Uh, cafes and restaurants, I suppose that's a little bit more common. Same with beauty therapy. Maybe there's a repair service that can be selling things, maybe an initial evaluation or a standard repair uh, that they could sell um, that could be redeemed. And if it, if it does, if that repair does end up scaling up a, a, above what a standard repair could be, then there could be a discussion around what other uh, costs might be involved. Um, Pre-sale haircuts, like I'm, I'm actually just kind of like trying to work out when I'm next going to be able to um, get my haircut. And when I was writing this presentation, I realized that I should be reaching out to my barber and seeing if I can buy some buy some vouchers in advance and, and potentially help them out uh, in, in this manner. Um, so it appealed from, from that point of view, it actually really appealed to me as, as a consumer as well. So almost any business can deploy this sort of product for sale online. So that's one of the most simple things that we can do. And something I recommend a lot of businesses look to op um, add to, uh, to their offering in market. Please do remember if you have any questions at any point, feel free to post them in the Q&A panel. If they're relevant to the, the item that I'm talking about at any given time, we'll try and address those um, at the time. Otherwise, we do have a question and answer session towards, towards the end with, um, with our panelists as well, with Rhonda Aminde. So bundles. All right, I'm a big fan of bundles. Now the reason for this, and um, that the main reason you would look at bundles is it's a great way to improve the total sales order value. Instead of making a, a single sale worth a smaller amount, you can obviously bundle it together, create greater value for a customer, and then look to improve the amount that you're, you're getting for each transaction. This is especially true for service businesses where there is a there is a, a, an opportunity to, to bundle things together and create a really great experience for people. And so, what you want to be thinking is there is there a product that potentially complements your service that you can sell alongside it? Um, or is there a related service that enhances yours that can be tied together? And I'll give you a couple of examples of what I mean. Ultimately, what you're looking for here and what you're trying to understand is what would be valuable for your customer when they're making a purchase and look to give them an option that allows them to buy several things at once that would be really valuable for them. Examples of this would be if you were selling a car service and you also sold a valet service at the same time. Right? And these are things that you could get up and, and selling online that you wouldn't traditionally have sold in this way. Um, potentially a, a treatment with a skincare product as well that was complementary. Those sort of things can go very well together and potentially the treatment could be a voucher and then you've got a skincare product that goes alongside it as well. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great valuable experience for a customer being able to get something that would, that would work alongside the treatment that they're looking to get. I quite like the idea of garment cleaning and alterations along with a prepaid pickup and drop off service. In fact, this is actually a solution that I um, have got under underway for a, uh, for a dry cleaning firm in Wellington. What they're looking to do is they've got their, their, their dry cleaning options for each of the different types of garments that they regularly clean, set up as a product on an e-commerce site, and the price includes, uh, well, when, you're, when you're checking out, there's a, there's a small $5 pickup and drop-off service that they've got bundled uh, into the purchase price. What that means is that someone can purchase that product online, designate where on their property they'll have a pickup and drop-off point, then that dry cleaning firm will pick it up from that drop-off and pickup point, clean it and, and return it to the same spot afterwards. And it's a, it's a great way to bundle that all together and create a really great customer experience. You could do a very similar thing for appliance repairs. And this is something, and, and computer repairs would be another uh, item under this. I think we're gonna see a real rise in, in the repair industry over the next six months, especially when, when budgets become a little tighter in households and people are going to look to repair things more often. And on top of that, it is gonna be more difficult to secure some computer equipment and some sort of appliances uh, with the world um, it, the way it is. We're already seeing it become, supply become quite constrained for a lot of computer items already, uh, especially webcams actually. Um, and one of my favorite examples is of bundling and productization was actually one that I saw here recently in, in Tauranga. It's actually a restaurant that's pivoted to selling make-at-home meal kits. And so instead of having um, uh, meals that you can buy, they actually set up a whole bunch of kits and people can buy them and, and, and bring them home and, and make this amazing uh, meal at home. And while we do have meal kits being sent out from all sorts of different providers like my food bag and so on, having a restaurant do this is just a little bit different and a great way for them to pivot and start selling their experience online. So I really like that one. Now, subscriptions. This may not be something that you'd considered, um, 
uh, for me, this is this is almost like the holy grail of, of, of products that you can sell online. And that is because this actually delivers recurring revenue for you. So it's a little harder to, to, to pivot a service into the space, but if you're able to do it, it's incredibly rewarding because it, it, it gives you recurring revenue on a monthly, weekly, or, or annual basis, right? And so users select the frequency of the service or the type of service they want and then the frequency, all right? then they purchase online with a recurring billing subscription. The key to this is that the customer can make a small purchasing decision. So they're saying, I want this particular product. And then they, they set a frequency. And for them, it's not necessarily a matter of making a, a huge range of purchases. They're making one decision and then it just rolls. And so it's much easier from a customer retention point of view and it and creates incredible customer lifetime value. One, one, one organization that's taken this to the nth degree is something like Netflix. They provide an amazing service with access to their content and they set it up on a recurring basis. And that's what's allowed them to become the kind of massive company they are today is by selling content on a subscription basis. So what does that look like for a lot of service businesses, right? As an example, um, we could look at a law firm that maybe sells access to templates for legal documents to help people self-service somewhat. It could be getting them, getting this law firm onto a bit of a, of a retainer there to access all of those templates. And if anything needed to be customized on top of that, they could then sell their other um, services on a, on a time and materials basis. Potentially your hairdresser could look to be selling regular haircuts at a particular frequency and, and pre-book in the next haircut when you finish the one that you're doing. Um, I think that's a, that could be a really great way. There'd be plenty of people that would like to have this sort of recurring relationship with their hairdresser if they don't already have so, they've done so. And, and setting that up with recurring billing would be a great way to ensure that you've got revenue coming through that you can guarantee. If you need a, a high cash flow kickstart to your business, you could even consider selling an annual or a lifetime subscription with upfront payment. So I've seen this a few times over the years, often with software firms where they have a monthly fee for their software. You can see that at a certain point in time, they wanted to go through a growth phase. What they'll do is they'll offer a lifetime subscription to their service for a one-off fixed cost. And if you get a whole bunch of people buying that at once, it gives them a nice cash flow injection and then allows them to, to operate um, or maybe take, a, take, a, take the next step forward. Another good example of this is something like Mount Ruapehu. Uh, when they've had ski seasons that have been cancelled in the past, what they've actually done is started selling lifetime passes for people at, um, at a reduced cost to get their cash flow coming through when they're not able to operate normally. So if that is, if you are able to look at some sort of subscription service with your business, there is a real opportunity here to package things up in a way that allows you to get some, some real momentum with your cash flow when you, when you start back up or even potentially before you start back up. Um, yeah, and so that's a ski field example that I was talking about. Right. The next thing is online booking. So this is a bit tricky if you're not actually able to deliver service right now, but it's certainly something that you want to consider quite a, a lot when it comes to operating um, potentially under level two or, or level one. Um, this is because an online booking system allows users to actually select the time slot that suits them. I think most of us have probably used an online booking system, but in my opinion, I've seen that it, it, these sort of systems haven't been deployed anywhere near as extensively as they, they could be. And if they do come with, with, with payment options, um, and then, then what it means is that you can actually create more of a contact-free environment because all the payments are done in advance. People can book at their convenience anytime, day or night. So you don't have to wait for someone to give you a call or send you an email. You can lock in and take payment for a service outside of office hours and before that someone comes into um, maybe your premise for the service. So that's that's pretty critical because it means that you could maybe reduce the, the number of um, people that are administrative um, people and it reduces the amount of contact that you have when delivering your service. Um, bookings can have an approval process if you need. So it could be more of a booking request that an admin checks before confirmation. And if you're worried about people booking directly into your calendar, and often online booking systems can actually be just an extension of your scheduling software itself so that people are booking directly into your scheduling software. And you know that when people are selecting uh, time slots, they are ones that you are able to deliver on. So the other key part of this is that it also allows you to collect an incredible amount of customer detail when people are booking and you can add them into marketing databases and therefore keep in contact with them and keep people coming back and, and booking again. So this is quite quite critical. Um, see what happens here. So do we go? Just didn't want to switch through for me. So 
this is one of the most desirable ways to productize a service and uh, but you do need to be able to offer uh, this booking schedule to people so maybe plumbers and electricians could start doing more of this sort of pre-booking uh, for an initial uh, site visit just to, to ascertain what was there and if there's a fee associated with that initial visit that could potentially be collected up front I was actually talking to a plasterer earlier on today who's looking to put this sort of thing exactly this sort of thing in place uh, more with a booking form and and a prepay for the actual initial visit which then becomes refundable if they go and um, pick up the quote later on. Any service that requires some sort of measure and quote, right? Being able to book in a time for a person to come to your house to do that measure and quote um, is highly desirable for the end user. What it also does is it allows you to maybe set expectations around what people need to do when you arrive on site, if that person even needs to be there so that you can maintain any social distancing that's required. Right, so that could be blinds, windows, renovations, that sort of thing. Booking in for vehicle servicing and repairs is uh, a pretty obvious one as well. And so just think about the fact that it could be for a paid initial consultation or it could be something that you maybe offer for free as part of a quoting process. Either way, what you're doing is allowing a person to, to interact and book with you online and capture their intent to use your services immediately and allow them to select a time that's going to suit them when they can, they can take that next step with you. So online booking is, is, is a great way to, to go. If you aren't able to offer service right now, you can't really open up a booking system to take uh, people's bookings right now because you don't know when you're going to be open. In that case, what we are recommending with a lot of people is to create waiting lists. And so if you're unable to provide that service now, what you could do, what, you, what, you, what you're probably going to need to get ready for is that under, under levels um, two and one, you're probably likely to get some very high demand when you're finally open for business because it's going to be a substantial amount of time before since people have been able to use your service. So in that high demand kind of environment, waiting lists are actually quite a good way to manage this. So people could pre-book with you um, and, and go onto a waiting list, even pre-pay, and those people are the first that are allowed to actually schedule in with you when your business is finally able to open. So it's res essentially reserve a place on your waiting list and be the first in line when you are operating. And so that, that can take the form of a, a simple contact form, uh, or it could be a little bit more advanced than that and actually takes payment for that service in advance. So here's some examples. So perfect ready service business, unable to operate at level three. So we're talking massage therapy here. So hairdressers and barbers and beauticians. Um, and yeah, well, I think I was gonna put another example there, but didn't quite get around to it. So this waiting list could be then combined with a prepay function or a voucher to just help with cash flow like we've talked about previously. Now, one final area where in terms of online services that I think this is kind of my prediction is going to be absolutely huge. And part of why we're doing this webinar today is that online training is gonna become the norm. It's gonna probably be a while before we can walk into a room with other people in it and, 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 and have a class or some sort of lecture or, or training solution. So I think this, this uh, group of people are gonna to have to pivot and a lot of them already have, but I can see online training becoming a huge in huge demand as, as many people are wanting to upskill during this time. Potentially they are having to look to reskill to get a new job. And so online learning programs are going to be massive if you are able to kind of create that content and make it available through an online training program or a, what's called a learning management system. Um, obviously webinars like this uh, or pre-recorded training videos can be quite helpful as well. And so um, maybe you could sell access to training videos could be another thing that you could look at. And if you could do that on a subscription basis, that could be fantastic too. There's online testing. And the great thing is a lot of these sort of uh, implementation, the uh, implementation of these sort of things is actually quite easy. The technology available to do these sort of things online has been available for some time. And so you're not trying to reinvent the wheel. You can take, make use of um, some pre-built tools to be able to deploy these things pretty quickly. And so my prediction really is, is that training providers that can get online and start selling their services in this way are going to do incredibly well. And we've already seen a few quite key success stories in this space. So that's, um, so my expert tip is that the time to get online is now. Um, and so ensuring people can purchase your service uh, will allow you to operate across all the alert levels. One thing that uh, Lisa, I think, mentioned there about the people queuing for McDonald's, which is kind of a little bit shocking, is that we're hearing a lot of stories bubbling up already since we went into level three, where people just simply aren't maintaining their bubbles. They've had enough of lockdown, and as far as they're concerned, we've seen the back of COVID-19. The reality is we haven't quite completely got to grips with this and especially the rest of the world hasn't. So there is every 
you know, op if we don't start maintaining our bubbles and, and, and being very careful in this space, there is a, a, a chance that we will head back up the alert levels and be locked down again. So my, my advanced tip for you is to be prepared for those alert levels to go up and down, have some contingency planning in place or continuity planning, and make sure that you're able to operate and sell your services in potentially some of the ways that we've outlined today um, so that you're prepared uh, if those sort of things do happen again. So that's that's my section. Um, and so, yeah, I hope, hope that was um, uh, valuable and you, and you got a few ideas and tips on how you could take a service business and evolve it in some different ways. I'd like to hand back to Lisa now for, for our panel discussion. Awesome, thanks Joe. One one question I just wanted to ask to you, obviously mm -hmm. a lot of this is talking about people's overall services. Mm -hmm. um, what would be your advice for someone who is starting? Would you want them to say, you know, maybe start with only one or two services or should they try and get most of their services um, online first? I think speed is everything, all right? So if you can get online with one key service that you know is going to be valuable um, to or that, that, that's going to be your most popular, then just start with one, right? Um, you can easily add more. And I think there's always a danger of trying to like assume too much in these states uh, situations and trying to, if you were trying to get like five or six or different options and services online, you might've hit Mr. Mark on about three or three of them and only two of them really work. So, so getting something online quickly and getting customer feedback is just critical to this and it will allow you to learn and then deploy the next service and the next next service and so on so yeah don't don't wait around until you've got a whole bunch um just just get something online as quickly as possible it's a great question awesome thanks joe and welcome Rhonda. hi hi so i mean one question that i sort of have as well um when can't you productize a service um, I think one of the key things is sometimes people try and productize everything and you don't need to, like, like Jara was saying, um, you've got to look for the products that have set processes that you can kind of define and keep to a certain scope. Um, and so it comes to the fact that what, what counts you productize, it's ones that are kind of one-off jobs that they're not very often done. Um, and if they are done, the process to get them done can be so variable that it's hard to put a price on them or even a, a description to them. So that becomes really difficult and they're probably best not being productized and to just do them on your, your typical way to handle them as an hourly rate with an estimate and that sort of thing. But pretty much everything that you find yourself doing regularly you know, it's something that you're doing regularly and repeatedly and that and the way you're doing it is not changing significantly between customers, you can productize and in, in doing the ways that Jara has, has mentioned. Mm. Do you mind if I just make one one little comment about that, Rhonda? You're exactly right. Anytime you've got something that's just a bit more custom and, and, and has a lot of variability to it. But one thing you can do with any of those sort of products is kind of bundle up a, a kind of a, a planning or a scoping session and sell that as something that's a bit more fixed price and that that can be sold as a product. And it's it's part of that entry process. Like that, that process you'll go through to work out what it will take to do the job, that itself can be much more easily productized than, than the team that holds up. And so that's a great way to kind of bundle something together and, and, and get it get it online and, and yeah and, and, public. and it's interesting when you write down you might go oh well i do this one thing so differently for all my clients challenge you to write down the process because i guarantee that there might be um abc that you do actually all the time and it's it, when it once it gets to de it, that's when it starts to variable and so you can productize abc and um, so Actually, it, it's a matter of assessing the work and actually looking at what am I doing all the time and how you can kind of prioritize that. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. very cool. So we do have a question from Laurie. Um, so she's sort of asking, what software can you use to sell your items on, on your website and webinars on your website? Um, who offers these services? It's a great question. So, um, so there's, essentially, if you're going to be selling uh, items on your website, you need an e-commerce platform. Um, and so there are a range of different systems that you can use to sell products online. Generally, you're going to have uh, WordPress, WooCommerce, um, maybe Shopify. Um, uh, there's uh, 
Wix and Squarespace can do it as well. We've also got our Zest e-commerce system, which is very good for that sort of thing. So it really comes down to the actual product that you that you sell and what's going to be the best fit before you determine the content management system or the software that you sell online. All right. And then with the webinars, we're, we're a huge fan of the Zoom software. And so you can actually, you could sell access to, to webinars and then do the registration and delivery of those, those webinars uh, through, through the Zoom software. We've, we started using it a couple of weeks ago and picked it up, mm. I feel like pretty quickly. Um, it was pretty intuitive. Mm. So um, yeah, from, from that point of view, I, I'd recommend uh, Zoom for that. And then and probably some, a bit of deep research and thinking about exactly what you're selling before you pick a, a content management system for e-commerce. I think one thing for me as well, and it goes back to not everything having to be perfect. Um, so, and likewise with a booking system, not everything has to be fully integrated with your website right now. The start might be your website to, to sell, and then the booking link could just be a link to a, to another program that you have where that people can access and book or, or things like that, and then work towards having them connected with your site. Um, so I guess what I, part of the message we are trying to say is, is it's best to take a step forward um, mm -hmm. rather than sit back and wait and it be three months down the line and you're still waiting. Um, I totally agree with that. We see that often, don't we? Um, where people see the big picture and it's hard to take the next step and it's, it's breaking it down into achievable steps, I think, is important. Yeah, yeah, and where possible, just keep manual processes in place until you understand the frequency at which they're being conducted. And then if, if it's something you're getting really bogged down from an administrative point of view, then then look to try and find a, a technology solution to maybe bridge that gap. As an example, if you're, if you're selling the, the, the Zoom, um, uh, like, webinars and things like that, you could potentially just be selling essentially uh, access to just a simple product with no integration. And then once it's been sold, you send that person a, a link to the webinar that, that you're going to be conducting. It, it may not need to be that fancy in terms of software until you get to a certain volume where that sort of thing becomes not practical and you've got some, some revenue to actually be able to invest in, in more of an automated system. Fantastic. Um, we have just, I'll jump to this other question first. Um, Michelle is asked, well, has told us she has a yoga business um, mm -hmm. and she is on offering online classes via Zoom. Uh, do we mm -hmm. have any recommendations for simple online booking systems uh, for the more non-technical people to install or does it have to go through a tech person? I'll leave that one to you, Jared. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure. Um, cool. yeah, there, are, there are a bunch of different systems. Like there are um, just a couple of ones you might like to research is uh, Simply Book Me, um, Bookly, uh, or Timely. They're all three of those are pretty good, um, pretty good systems. Most of them uh, kind of can you can kind of deploy a standalone booking system with them, which is which is really straightforward. And so you could just link to them from your website. Whereas if you wanted to try and integrate those and have them as a as a booking function uh, on your website itself, that that, that can just take a little bit more technical skill, especially if you want to have payment made as well at the same time. So um, I'd, I'd kind of suggest anywhere where you start to get in needing payments and transactions, it's really good to employ someone technical there just so you get that right. Um, because the last thing you want to do is be you know, having something that doesn't quite work when people are trying to give you their credit card because they're probably not going to do it again if it doesn't work quite right. So that part's critical. But if it's just the simple booking system that you're after, then there are a few things there you might like to try looking at. Awesome, thanks, Jar. And so I know throughout the, the webinar today, we sort of touched on around productizing and why people should do it. But I mean, what, what really, why really should people focus on productizing, especially in the service industry? Uh, I, I just think it's really attractive to customers. Um, you know what you're getting, you've got a set scope, you know the price that you're gonna get it for. Um, and it's quite reassuring as a, as a customer that I, you know, it takes away some of those, those negative concepts that you end up feeling before you press buy. <laughs> um, so, and especially at this time, you know, when only able to transact online, it means I can still buy while I'm, while I'm online. I was actually thinking about your hairdresser, Jara, and I, I was thinking about that today because, you know, yep. roots, um, <laughs> is that, you know, when we go down to this level where we can have hairdressers, there's going to be at least two million of us all trying to get an appointment. Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, man, if I could just book in now, <laughs> I, and, and I'd be happy to prepay and I'd actually also be happy to maybe even pay a premium if it was on a wait list. 
to get yeah. in earlier, you know, so it, it, it's kind of interesting when I've looked at a lot of services as well, I've had to hire a plumber during, mm-hmm. during this, this breakdown period and I didn't know what his call out fee. If actually he had that on his website and had the call out fee there and I could have just pressed the button to, to, to book him in and to pay for that, it would have been a lot more reassuring in, mm-hmm. in having to call someone out. So. Yeah, from a customer's perspective, I think you'll end up um, having a lot more, more, being a lot more attractive to them because it's a set scope, set price. Yeah. What's your thoughts yeah. on that? I think, I think so too. I think it, in, in its simplest form, it's making you easier to do business with. Mm-hmm. Right, and that, that's that's what almost every single item that I talked about there was was around that. It was like how how do you make it easier for people to buy from you? And if you keep that in mind, and if that's your that's, that's your objective, then not only is it going to help you like dealing with all the different alert levels and and deploying contact free commerce, it, it's actually going to improve your ability to secure revenue. All right, and on top of that, I think you touched on another great point there, Rhonda. Just re- there really is going to be a significant demand for services that people haven't been able to access when we hit levels two and and one. Um, and I, I for one too would probably I'd be like if if it was my my barber shop, I'd be happy to prepay for a bunch of haircuts if it meant that I could get in there first when they opened. Like I, I literally would, and I know that there'd be a whole bunch of people that would do the same. So there, there's a there's a there's a just a simple service business that right now cannot make any money, but if they deployed an initial of like this, they could actually probably make more than they do in a normal week where everyone's kind of trying to get secure their, their, um, their space and in in maybe a waiting list or something. Yeah, the other thought I just had was um, it makes it easier to market. You know, so if you've got a set product, you know, a bundle or a voucher, you can market those things and then people get attracted to websites to see your other services that you haven't been out of productized. So it, it's a nice way to take your, your, your brand and your products to market through, through like you were saying, the, the vouchers or just the, you know, the wait list example, et cetera. It that becomes a very containable way to promote yourself. Definitely agree. And I think outside of the current situation of, of lockdown and COVID-19, I was starting to see a trend out there with booking and and having that access through websites. Um, And I know myself, I actually started choosing, you know, my mechanic based on could I actually book online just to get this done because then I'm in charge of booking my own day or organizing my own time. I'm not ringing to go, well, when's available and then having to go, oh, let me go and check that or let's see if that will work. Um, And so I think people are wanting to start saving their own time as well. Um, and, and obviously look for businesses that offer, you know, productization and being able to do it all online through a booking or and payment mm. system. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I've actually been talking to a lot of businesses about exactly that prior prior to this. A little, well, during during lockdown, some people had a lot of time, but uh, before if we go back to before then, uh, a lot of people were really busy. And if and if I was for, for myself, for myself as an example, uh, when it comes to booking in for a service or something like that that I need, um, I don't have time to deal with that during the day. The first time I've got to think about that is not until I put the kids to bed and it's maybe eight thirty at night. And if someone can allow me to book in at that point in time, they're going to win my business. Right, I, I, I'm not. I, my decision-making process is at a time where where I'm not going to be able to give someone a call mm-hmm. or operate under those traditional circumstances. So if someone's got a technology solution for me, I'm going to take it. And and I know that that's a massive trend that we're seeing out there. Definitely. Um. So when when is the best time to productize? Now. <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean, in terms of your your business development, you know, if you're just a startup, it's the right time. If you, if you're old. Um, fully functioning business now is the right time. <laughs> you know, in terms of COVID, definitely now is the right time. So I think there's no no better time than now because of of COVID. But I think even if you're a, a starting up business, it's a good idea because of all those positives that we've all been talking about the marketing, the way that it's attractive to people etc. It, it, it's a good time to actually put some effort into sorting out what your processes are to deliver a, a service and then coming up with a product for that. I mean, and, and if it doesn't work, if you find in delivering it that you end up losing money because maybe it takes you longer to do the service than what you thought and the price is not quite right, 
you can adjust it and change it. it it's no no um, big deal. I think the important thing would be to try something and to monitor if you've got that tight um, uh, and then adjust the product accordingly to make sure that you're still making money. That it's actually attractive to your to customers and it, it makes sense to you, you know, the whole industry or business that you're, you're involved in. Mm. Yeah, I think, the thing, the other thing to keep in mind is we've got some unprecedented market forces. It's probably the best way to describe it right now. We've mm -hmm. got a whole bunch of people that are having to make purchasing decisions in new ways, right? And so if you've ever considered trying to evolve your business or your service business into, into some sort of product that people can buy, now's the time to try it because you've got a whole bunch of people that are almost demanding to buy in that way. Or when I say demand, probably even being forced to buy in that way. And mm -hmm. so you've got a, a real opportunity there, I suppose, to take advantage or capitalize on that. Um, just as, uh, I mean, and as an example with, um, with Michelle who messaged before, who's got a yoga business and she's doing the, the classes via Zoom, like that, that's, 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 a, that's a market requirement that we just would not have even imagined several months ago. And, and so that's, that's, that's kind of her, her customers need to be able to operate with her in, in that way. Um, and I, I'd say that's true for, for almost all businesses out there at the moment that provide a service. There's, there's just an unprecedented demand for being able to, to use digital tools to, to sell. I agree, actually. I was, I was thinking about an example with home cleaning. Um, I would, I, I, I mean, I'm working from home. We've actually got four people in my home all working from home. My cleaning level's gone up that I need in my home. I was like, man, if someone actually created a cleaning service, but not, not just a service, but a product, well, they'll come in and do a, a really good clean. Um, I've got a healthcare worker living in my home, so I, I actually need some reassurance with some higher level cleaning every now and then. That would be cool. So I do think it is an example of, we're in unusual circumstances, the types of products that we're wanting is slightly different and we're more open to things being productized. So if you haven't done productization before, now's a good time to rethink it in light of that environment that we're in, yeah. And I think, yeah, there is definitely a lot of different ways you can do it. And I just wanted to take it back to Jara's first point around vouchers. You know, I was just actually sitting here thinking, you know, right now I feel a little bit stressed. There's a lot on, there's a lot happening. Um, I want to re reward myself later on with maybe a massage or something. Mm -hmm. I'm in the mood right now to buy that voucher. Two weeks time, it's gone. So having that ability to, to perhaps reward myself now, but actually have the, have the item later or, or the service later, I should say, um, could be where people are at. Because again, once we all are out there and, and able to, I guess, get back to some sort of new normal, um, people will be looking for those things just to have a break. Because, you know, being, being inside or, or maybe having to have started homeschooling for, for the last sort of month or two has been quite stressful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, that's the feeling around some people at work. So what I will, I will recap um, right now and let us all get on with our day. Um, but just where we are right now. So what we know, so we do know things are not going to go back to normal in a hurry, even when the restrictions ease th further. I know Jared touched on it, but we could be in and out of some alert levels depending on how we go. Um, so we are going to have to change how we do business to survive. Um, the opportunity there is in a lot of cases, introducing digital tools. So you know, voucher buying as well as booking tools, et cetera, will actually help improve productivity. Um, and having people get access to your business as well. Um, prediction is those businesses that work out ways to operate in a contactless way will be more successful. Fully agree. And recommendation, if you ha can't productize your whole service, at least get the initial consultation component bookable online so you can convert your customers 24 seven. And across to you, Joe. So just a little bit about Zealed to wrap up, if you're not familiar with who we are. Uh, Zealed have been, uh, have helped over 15,000 businesses transform digitally over the last 20 years. And I'll tell you what, we're, we're kind of a little bit busier than ever uh, with, with businesses trying to pivot in this environment. If you have a service business and you'd like some support to try and work out how you can get online and get transacting in any of the ways that we just spoke about, please let us know in the feedback form we'll be sending out. We offer a free strategy session or a website audit that is available with one of our experienced digital business strategists. We'll send out that feedback form a little bit later on today. 
please note in there if you'd like some additional support. Our next webinar is on Friday the 1st of May, covering how to manage an e-commerce site. Now this is vital for anyone that's just getting started selling online, because we'll talk through the processes that you need to be aware of for processing orders and dispatching and, and delivery notifications, etc. Uh, Tom Griffith, our digital business strategist here in Toronto, will be presenting uh, for that webinar. Now, if you do need to get an e-commerce store urgently, I know that may not be quite the right fit for who for, for, for service businesses here today, but we have got our Get E-commerce movement, and uh, that is available on the Zeal website. We have already allocated our first 500 free e-commerce sites to New Zealand uh, SMEs in need. That's a free website e-commerce setup. It's free hosting for the first 12 months, and the only cost is a 2% success fee. So there is a little bit of a, a fee associated with it, but it's completely de risk for people wanting to sell online. So what, what's become abundantly clear in the, in the couple of weeks that we ran that program is that more than 500 sites are needed. We're extremely confident of being able to extend this program and we're looking to issue another tranche of websites in the next seven to 14 days. So if you are in need of, a, of an e-commerce site or you know someone that is, please send them along to the Zeal website. They can register uh, their interest in a free e-commerce site uh, when we launch our next round of allocations, which as I said, in the next seven to 14 days. Uh, special thanks to our moderator today, Lisa and guest Rhonda. Uh, that is all the time we have for today folks if you missed part of the webinar would like to see it again we will be posting a video of it on YouTube uh, and if you feel um, if you know anyone that might benefit from attending these in the future please feel free to share the registered link as well I wish you a good day and good luck and thanks to you Jai. great presentation yeah Cheers. thank you guys bye bye